Hey, what's up? I'm Jay. And in this video, we're going to take a little bit of a break from the 3D making ofs and uh, tutorial type stuff. I want to bring you a new type of video where I bring somebody else in and we have a conversation about something specific that they do. So this is a little bit of a test. I want to see what you guys think. I've been thinking about doing this kind of content for a while. And it's an idea I had to not replace anything that I do here on the channel, but to bring in other people and to add a different kind of content that I could supplement with the other stuff that I do here. So the idea is that I can pull in talented, interesting people, and then have a conversation about a specific work they did or a specific workflow that they're known for or something and kind of geek out a little bit with them and just be able to share information and tips uh, from other talented people here on the channel. So that's the idea. Uh, let me know what you think. If you love it, if you hate it, let me know. Uh, if you do like this video and this sort of content and you want more, hit the like button and then comment down below someone that you think would be cool to see here on the channel and share some interesting tips. So that's it for a little intro. Um, just, I hope you enjoy uh, my conversation I had with CMAC. I recorded this a while ago. Um, but yeah, I think you should enjoy it and learn some things. I know I did. And I'd like to do more things like this. So have fun, learn something. And here's my conversation with CMAC. Today, we're joined by CMAC Roshani. I want to take a deeper dive in his work. CMAC has been a character artist in the game industry for over 15 years. He's worked on big projects like Call of Duty and Borderlands and most recently Ghost of Tsushima. And now he's an independent artist up there in Washington doing cool things over there and also fellow YouTuber, which is cool. I think one of the best interviewers we have in our little community. That's how we originally connected. So today, I want to oh let me bring you on, dude. You're just you're just over there while I'm talking about you. C Mac. Hey man, what's <laughs> up, dude? What's <laughs> cool. up, dude? Well this is good. This is good. It's fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. Okay, so today the idea is uh I just get to nerd out and pick one of your works yeah. and then we're just gonna talk about it. So I've got some stuff right here. Let's go over here. So here we are taking a look at your portfolio. You can see all some crazy demon guys. I actually remember this, dude, this ranger from back in the day yeah that's from 2012 you know that's nice uh this is when i when i was trying to get into the game industry and i wanted to find a way to move so before this one i actually did there there is a guy i called it mafia man the guy with mm -hmm. the hat and uh, yeah and then that one got really popular yeah that one i remember this too and, this uh, was like maybe in like a d'artiste book or an expose or something yeah it got printed but if i show you the, the book it's funny because his face is like in the middle of the two pages so it's like half oh <laughs> half weird of this page, half of the... yeah so imagine you get the best oh, yeah, uh, portrait award of the year <laughs> yeah those are all <laughs> mental ray back in 2000 uh, dude 12, yeah oh man RT. i remember yeah. mental ray Painful. this is uh this makes it even more of an epic achievement that it's in mental Ray. yeah it was it was now it's much easier actually i it was so painful at the time when i made this one I told myself, I actually said to myself that I'm never, I'm never, I'm not going to do this ever again. Like I'm done with, with like spending so much time on rendering something in, you know, just for portfolio. And now yeah. time goes on, you know, things change and uh, we don't have to do that anymore. And as a character artist, you don't really have to render stuff unless if you want to just to show your stuff. You know, the moment I joined the game industry, things changed. You know, you get connections, you know, people, you know, the industry, your reputation and your work in the company actually makes it easy to to find jobs because you, you have a record to show that you can do the work. I, yeah. I feel you with that. I mean, I felt like um, learning rendering, like when I started out, I was just focusing on modeling. And nowadays, because it's easier and because like, I just want, you know, you yeah. just want to see your character like this, you end up, you know, learning it. But yeah, in like jobs and stuff, it's a lot of times it's still focused right you know what's interesting i actually when i look at my portfolio now i'm like uh i'm i don't like it anymore but i'm also not doing anything to to update it except like the, the recent work that i did for my class the the samurai guy and you know a bunch of mm -hmm. things here and there or something for youtube or for students other than that i'm like the portfolio feels old to me you know but nowadays you're doing kind of a different career path, wouldn't you say? Like, you know, it seems like if it was a priority for you to get another studio job, then you would adjust it's your not, portfolio. Yeah. It's not, not right now because I, the contract that I have is pretty good. If if the contract changes for some reason or, I mean, if there's no work, I would rather take my chances on doing 
something myself on the art side or teaching or you know have my own studio or i don't know we will see um, yeah. but um you know it's it changes when you grow when you grow older your priorities change so it really depends like if i have to work somewhere i don't mind it like i will i'll just when i make a decision i'll just stick to it and figure out a way <laughs> just like how i did it so far until up to this point you know all right man well you down to just dive in and let me nerd out a little bit on bodybuilder yeah let's do that bodybuilder i like how you just one word too just bodybuilder <laughs> body man you're just like <laughs> i don't this is not this this seems like from the title and from looking at this and i definitely want to talk about the kind of unique somewhat unique process of how this got textured and everything because this yeah. one did jump out to me and yes yeah, so just really quick for people that don't know which which extra interesting about this is that you sculpted this guy and then yes. photogrammetry was used after the fact so you know, this may yeah. look like a scan and everything, but it's not a scan. At least not it's using scan, scanned no. assets, but you made it by hand, right? Yeah, yeah, everything. So, you know, because I was I'm always obsessed with anatomy still today. Like if I don't have to make money, if I do art, I'm just going to sculpt anatomy. Yeah, so I enjoy working on anatomy. That's the, that's the thing, you know, I don't know why. That's just a part of me, I guess. And I actually enjoy yeah. oversized bodies i liked bodybuilding you know when i was younger i was doing it but i stopped oh, when yeah. i left my country and i couldn't go back to it because of being busy or other excuses you know we have excuses sure. all the time yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean it's fun and for the technical side of it you asked about the, the scan and the stuff so i did the model and then james is a good friend of mine 3d scan store i know him for a long time we never met mm -hmm. but you know i know him for a long time since he started this company i guess long time ago, like 10, 12 years ago, if I remember correctly. And then uh, at the time I made a bodybuilder, it was just the beginning of, you know, when I was trying to get good at anatomy and he, he one day he messaged me, he said, can I sell it on my website? I said, yeah, sure. So later I decided to make this, I think last uh, 2019 uh, or 20, end of 2020. I, I made this because I wanted to teach it to one of my students. I turned this into an orc character, kind of like an orc warrior. And mm, yeah. yeah, James said, uh, can I take this? I was asking, talking to him and then he was like, let me try something. I said, okay, try it. He, he put his uh, clean topology on, on it. And mm -hmm. then he actually applied his, his scan textures. And then okay. he did some renders in Marmoset, which you can see, it looks really good. Yeah. Do you know if this is Marmoset three actually, or four? I think three, I, I don't remember, to be honest. This was like a few months ago. So might be four. I don't know when four came out, but you know, actually, if you go to my website, if I can find mm -hmm. it, there is a video on the market section on my website. I actually posted the, the video that he made for free. People can check that out to see the, the process. So if you go, people want to check this out on their edgeloop.org marketplace. This is the video. He actually explains everything. Gotcha. That's why I posted there. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So doing anatomy for fun is you know, not commonly heard. It sounds like you do kind of lean, like when you do it for your own interest yeah. or satisfaction, you would do males that are super buff, like the Arnold body type kind of thing. Yeah. Is this like at all related to, like, were you doing anatomy early on? Is that one of those things? Because often yeah, it's kind of yeah. common that, right, when you start doing from character the, art. From the beginning, uh, I, I, I can tell you this now, actually, I, the more I look at it, when I go back into the past, when I was a kid, I was into a sport. Like I was playing uh, professional soccer uh, before I turned 15, 16. And I was, my plan was to, like, like to get into the soccer team and then join the national soccer team and international, mm. like national or whatever, just go as, as high as I can. That was my plan. I never wanted to be a character artist. And I was sitting there and drawing uh, famous football players, soccer players. You know, I was always fascinated. How, how, how comes these guys have huge muscles, huge huge bodies it's so weird how can, how can they run so fast and it's very interesting you know i think it has something to do with that you know and then the, when i got access to zbrush years ago many many years ago 15 16 2005 i guess 17 years ago i started learning anatomy that was my interest that was the first thing so, that you were doing the first really the first thing i wanted i started doing in 3d was doing car models you know hard surface modeling because I, I was calling myself a 3D modeler. And then when ZBrush yeah. came out, a friend of mine called me and he said, have you seen this new application? You can just start sculpting in it. It's like crazy. You can pull and do a lot of things and create a stuff without worrying about poly count or without moving vertices. <laughs> 
this is like it was like a, re a revolution you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. industry. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I mean that's why I started using ZBrush. But yeah, I mean it's it's interesting because I I did a lot of anatomy study and I never shared it anywhere because I wasn't um I don't know, I didn't care about like to just share and say I'm doing this or whatever. I'm not saying if anyone is doing it is wrong, but I was always like interested about doing it uh for my own satisfaction, you know, or to mm -hmm. understand how body works. And then you know, um, I started a couple of a few years ago. I st actually started to go deeper into body anatomy and why certain muscles look certain way, how their names relate to their move, to their uh, function. And ah, a lot of that's things, what I wanted you know? to ask yeah. about. So you do yeah. you went you went as deep as like memorizing the names and and stuff like that. Yes. So I memorized okay. almost most of the name of the muscles. I don't remember it now, by the way, because this is something it just goes away if you don't practice it. But I, I went as far as just studying to understand the body and why certain muscles look certain way and how the evolution helped to to ch to develop these muscles. And why do we have a stronger leg muscles? You know, why our hands are certain ways? Because, we, you know, it's it's so weird, like among all the animals in, in, in the evolution that happened on Earth, humans are the most cap capable, like with their, with their hands. We can do crazy things with our hands. It's unlimited. There's no limits. Mm -hmm. All of that is it's just fascinating to me. And then I started getting deeper into it. And you know what's interesting? The deeper you go into studying the reason behind things uh, on the on the muscles, why they, they're called mm -hmm. certain things, w how they function and everything, you become a better artist. Yeah, well, I kind of want to get into that. Um, you have the model over on your side. Can we like open it up in ZBrush, kind of spin it around and just take yeah, a look? Yeah. Maybe we can ask a little bit. I can ask a little bit more about the process there. Okay, so we're taking a little bit of break here, all right? Uh, what we're doing right now, we're sharing skills. Skill sharing. Skill sharing. Skill share. Oh, Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Obviously something I've been talking about on this channel before. You know it, you love it, Skillshare. It's a one-stop shop with all kinds of different skills. You know, here in the channel, if you found my video, maybe you specifically like something like 3D modeling or character art, you know? Something really specific to what I do and what I try to share about. What's cool about Skillshare is that for a low monthly fee, you can look at all kinds of stuff. Like for instance, grab your audience, create enthralling intros. That's what I wanna do. What about edit compelling videos for YouTube? This could have helped me make this video way more compelling if I watched this video, but I didn't. Here's some other cool ones that you can see. Like I'm also interested in writing as you can see. I wanna create like my own stories. So if I were to open up this class, and you can see how they've got different topics on character and I can go through this short course from Daniel Older about making short stories of my own. So this is just some of the stuff that I'm interested in myself, but that's what's cool about Skillshare. There's a broad range of premium content for all the little things that you're also interested in. So if you wanna learn some more, click the link down below in my description. The first thousand people that click that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can take some of these courses yourself for free and see if you like it. So that's it for Skillshare. Let's get back to learning how to sculpt some buff dudes. I think I have to kind of get a couple questions out of the way that aren't necessarily yeah. from me, although I guess I'm a little bit curious, but people ask me this kind of shit all the time. How many polygons is it? Can you show us like if you can step up and down? So so I see the head matter, separate. That's honest. cool to see. So I, the way I work is I actually use Dynamesh, okay, and just... Uh, work with it and then when i finish it i think i don't remember actually exactly but when i'm done with it i do a quick zero measure and zero mm -hmm. measure usually gives you a fairly good mesh for this type of work and then uh, i would transfer the details from the sculpt uh, the dynamic this is i think this one is dynamic yeah you can see this is dynamic i didn't even try to uh, wow. make the zero measure yeah once that's wow. done i'm transferring the details from hires to, to a fairly cleaner geometry to be able to control it better and then I just take it from there, you know? This is the final version of the file, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Because, I mean, I, I didn't even try to add uh, surface details on this guy because the texture takes mm -hmm. care of it. And and look, sure. I, I have a big, a strong machine. This is, uh, I have 100 gigs of free memory. So right now, this is 120 million, something like that. 120 million polygons, is it? Wow. Yeah. Really? Almost. Dang. Yeah, for the whole thing. And it works fine. That's super fascinating to see that the head 
is just Dynamesh. I think also, would you mind zooming in? Because I think people would be interested in this because this, what's cool is something that I'm always interested in myself is kind of the magic of when a model mixes with good texture and good materials and they combine to make the final product. The fact that we saw the face before and people would think it's like really top tier, you know, hyper realistic. And then we see the high poly that it's derived from. Like, I think people would think, oh, I think anyway, it's a good illustration that you don't have to go all the way to the end in the high poly. It's like about the primary yeah. and secondary forms. You can do all that tertiary stuff in uh, texturing. Yeah, most of it you can do it in texturing, to be honest, especially with, you know, having access to 3D scanner store. Their assets are really good. Um, you know... Even the R and I just wanted to show you this one as well. It's the same thing, yeah. Dynamish. But mostly in the in our industry, depends on the company. The, where you work is different, I guess. I don't know, but uh, majority of the time, you you, you will use scanned uh, data these days. Companies want to make the best product possible. So I mean, scanning a real human being is the best way to go. And I think using uh, scan textures is the way. There's no point to spend time it's actually good to learn you know i know how to texture without anything without any any you know i did that mafia man like 10 15 years ago i did textures for production without the scans but these days it's just um it's good to know it to understand it but you will not necessarily use it in production if you get a best base a scan you can just change it to whatever you want you can turn it into a zombie or you can anything you know so yeah i wanted to show you that Dwayne johnson i also did this for one of my classes i don't know if you want to look at that it's the same yeah. process um so yeah, so now what are you starting with? You know, people often ask me, should I start with a sphere all the time? And oh, what, what are your thoughts okay. on that? I really use really simple primary geometries, all the, you know, like cylinder and things like that, and then put it together. So yeah, I mean, uh, so this is Dwayne Johnson. The process is, this is what I use. Just a simple, uh, I put them together. Wow. You know, certain apply the mustoid trapezius, uh, clavicle. And then I, I turned that into this. I actually have a tutorial for this on my website. Uh, it's pretty oh, cool. cheap, like $30 or whatever. But then Hulk is the same thing. This one, I did it the same way. I did it live for a class in a couple of sessions. So for this one, I have, see, I have like textures. Uh, yeah, you got detail here. So, yeah, so that's what I, nice. uh, I, I think I used the scan for that base. I don't remember, to be honest. I need to look at the videos. And then I, yeah, so you can see some of these. Mm -hmm. um, details are matching the texture. Are you making a base mesh right after those primitive shapes? Or are you sculpting a dynamesh for a while before you make the, I actually what becomes yeah, final? Yeah, I finish it. Yeah, I finish it with dynamesh. So this is what I do, right? So look, I mean, this is the actor I was trying to make it for my summary class. So mm -hmm. I finished him, uh, or same as Dwayne Johnson. This is ready to, to be wrapped. So I mm -hmm. just need a clean topology. Maybe I could just even use the Hulk geometry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can grab this geometry, the topology, and just wrap it on this guy using z -wrap or yeah so do you use z -wrap? z wrap yeah i i, I use z -wrap. i don't use it all the time because i'm not doing this all the time if you don't have z -wrap, you can just do it by hand you can you know put these on top of each other and use move brush to basically match this to your uh, yeah to this geometry right and then uh, project the details and move around that's how i did in in the past before z -wrap. sure and it's fine like it, it takes a bit more time but whatever it's, it doesn't matter but z -wrap, z worth it though even if you use it once yeah, in a while yeah is great yeah z -wrap is great yeah it's so, so cool to, honestly it's just so cool to see the heads separate i would have never thought that yeah i want to jump over here so yeah you were showing me this before we started but this what's cool about this it feels like kind of a culmination of the things that you're into it seems first and foremost to be an anatomy sculpting exercise you did like infuse some story in here and some drama yeah. to, but really I, I i see it as a way to to like make the body contour and i really like the back leg i feel like the flex on the back leg is coming through yeah Thanks, that's man. really cool i could the i outside, could still improve really cool. it to be honest so um always this is actually me so the demon this is me <laughs> damn dude that's how buff you are dude damn <laughs> i know i'm not that that's buff. cool dude but i mean like this story you should do your youtube you videos know. just shirtless bro just shock everybody <laughs> <laughs> But you know what's interesting? The reason I did this, I didn't finish it. I should finish it. I wanted to finish it and tr get a 3D printer and print it and stuff like that. Tight. But I, I can improve the work, man. Like I, I, I can see the face. It's not done yet. Like it's not something I would say I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, doing anatomy, it's, it's something that takes time. I, I figured the more I do it, the more I just realize how much I don't know. 
You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. It's, no, every it's time it's something... learning, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, because look, I mean, I was looking at this guy again, and I'm like, why did I make these muscles uh, like that? Uh, it's so like as if like he's flexing it. So I should change that. Really, it should be more smooth. You know. And so you had the impulse to to change it while we were. Yeah, you want to do it right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I feel that. See. That's okay, so about be. that, I, that's another big question I'd like to. Uh, to hear from you is how long did this take and maybe how long did the demon take in comparison but do you remember how long this project took you this one i think i did it in like six or seven class or eight classes for my student eight two hours 16 17 hours something like that this one i don't remember because i was just working on it back and forth adjusting and this and one you like did that. not start with like another anatomy study you started this from scratch no, again yeah yeah I, I start from scratch actually the legs i i have a very simple a crochet that i made for for one of my classes just to explain how anatomy works and then i grabbed that and put it on this guy and i tr I, I made the butt top upper body just you know out of nothing just putting things together and making it work and then for the legs i grabbed the leg from the crochet as a base so i can have the muscles I just wanted to quickly like work on the idea and pose it. And then I put it in pose and I sculpted each side. This leg actually has issues. You can see, I don't know if I brushed it the wrong way or something. This section, I have to fix it. Yeah, I mean, it's not even done yet. I think I finished this leg. That's why you, you said this is good. But mm -hmm. I need to do some adjustments overall. But yeah, I mean, again, this is Dynamish. And then I turned it into a clean topology using zero measure. Okay. And I made the tail separately. Then I merged mm -hmm. it to the body, you can see then transfer the details. So I, I work in sections. It makes it easier to to do the work. So you work in sections and then eventually combine them all into a yeah. pretty clean base mesh to finish. Yeah, for finish. But the final, final base mesh is, it's actually, sh it should be cleaner than what we see here. Uh, you know, for this one, I didn't care much because I just wanted to do it for printing. Let me actually, I'm loading another file, but I will show you now just to explain. But the base mesh here is just a quick zero measure. That's it. You don't so do any guides clean. or any uh, poly group, you know, tricks. Depends. Is it just a straight zero mesh? So I test with a straight, a straight zero mesh. If it doesn't work, then I'll just look at which areas are bad, and I'm, I'm going to use, you know, guides or uh, poly groups and things like that. You can see on the tail, I have poly groups. Mm -hmm. Separate. Yeah, zero mesh does really good with tubes and ropes yeah. and stuff. It's pretty surprising. But I wanted to show you this guy. I did this one. This is the, the one I was doing for the ah. class. Mm -hmm. This this is what we made because I wanted to teach my ah. student how to do the anatomy. And then I showed him how to transfer to, uh, change that into this guy, something like an orc. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, I didn't ever finish this to put it in my portfolio. But I, I'm going to do it, I guess, at some point. Yeah, you should. I mean, yeah. And then seeing an, a proper like ray trace render on this, all the details would be amazing. Yeah. It's cool to, it's cool to see too. You do the anatomy and you do it like you're making it hard on yourself. I think that's, what's kind of interesting is like you're intentionally making it an extra challenge on yourself. You mentioned that it's not as fun starting with base meshes, which makes you sound like a sicko, yeah. but I think that's good <laughs> for people to hear that because, you know, it's really a mindset. You know, I think uh, yeah. taking on character art for the long term. It makes sense to like form a positive, healthy relationship with anatomy studies and stuff. So really cool to see that you start from scratch and everything and then the results that you're getting. And then also if you compare the bodybuilder guy, which you spent you know 16 hours doing and then the final result being partially covered up, I wouldn't say like that's not what you would do in production because it's that's yep. the most time consuming and most effort filled way to produce that character. But you're doing it for a class, you're doing it for yourself from a learning point of view. It's the deepest and most beneficial way to do it. So it's cool to yeah. to learn that that's what's going on behind the scenes, you know, of your projects. Yeah, yeah. I, I basically hit two targets with this, right? I wanted to show my students about human body anatomy. And the best way to do it is to show it on a muscular guy, to, in my opinion, you know, because you can see the muscles, their pose, posture and everything. You can search on YouTube, bodybuilders, triceps pose or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and they will do a specific pose. Then you, you can even see how their muscle moves and you know which movement activates which muscle. So this was good for that. And then it gave, gave me two targets, right? I mean, I have a body already that I'm, I'm done with it. I can just turn this into an orc. I don't have to start from a scratch. So. We did two studies at the same time, but in production, technically, I would just I, I either get a scan or 
if they need multiple bodies for for that reason it makes sense to make a body as a base uh, if they want like to have five different orgs right so i, I just make mm -hmm. one and then use that and then make five orcs using that if, if it's just one character i would just make the orc i, I wouldn't uh make a bodybuilder and then turn it into an orc <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but i mean like like i said from an education point of view and from a growth like a personal growth point of view yeah. it's you know it's the way to do it and so it's cool that you're yeah. doing it even 15 years in you know i think that's uh i think people that are wanting to learn anatomy which is a lot of people anyone that's starting to be interested in modeling their own characters or making characters all the advice they're getting from everywhere is to spend time doing anatomy and yeah i think it's it's cool to see that you're still working on it you're still finding ways to improve but you know obviously yeah, the, also, the making it hard yeah. on yourself is what's making it good dude yeah yeah it, it's actually important to really push yourself to be able to do some good work you know and i, I actually i teach anatomy so if people want to come to my classes i'm actually thinking to do a class for next year perfect dude yeah, well, yeah. I mean, this is the this is good quality stuff. Definitely more anatomy stuff than I do, and the quality here, you know, you can't argue with it. So I think it's really cool to see the effort and time you put into it, and cool to see your process, dude. Thank you for sharing it with me. It, it's no the big takeaway for me is keeping it simple. I mean, starting from scratch, I think, is a way to grow the most. Uh, yeah. Forcing yeah. yourself to do that. Because easily to do the demon, just like you did with the orc, you could have just grabbed the character. But to force yourself to make a leg again, to make an arm again, that's what makes you better. Yeah. And seeing yeah. your meshes, dude, that was cool to see, you know, what kind of like quality you can get with using textures and materials properly, you know, versus yeah. the, the high poly. So, yeah, dude, thank you for uh, hopping you know, on and share your process. Uh no worries, man. I think you said you make it hard on yourself. I think that's the key because we can easily forget uh, whatever you whatever you learn, you can forget it. If you don't repeat that basically process, regardless of what it is, it could be music, it could be a sculpting. If you don't repeat it, if you don't keep practicing on it and you just shelve it because your production doesn't need it, you, you can easily just forget it. And it's something you have to practice again. Like if I if I Right now, I don't remember the muscle names. That's a good example. But if I get back to it, I just need to review it again. It will, it will just come back. Yeah. So it's important to do it. And honestly, the, the most fun is to start from scratch because whenever I start from a base mesh in the past, I remember I had to struggle to find a way to make that character look like a different character, you know, or if I was mm -hmm. doing likeness, because when you start from scratch, you're actually building everything with based on what you see. Definitely, you have unlimited freedom, yeah. you know, when you don't start with a base mesh. Yes, exactly. There's no problem. Well, yeah, dude, I, I appreciate that. I think that was great uh, words of advice, man, to make it harder on yourself. It's something I believe in, too, you know, dude, just like the further you get down anything trying to get better at it, it's kind of just a truth in life. I think that sometimes you're in a position where to progress and grow in the direction that you want to go, you yeah. have to actively make things harder on yourself, which is a little counterintuitive. Because when you're younger, you're trying to avoid, or in some other areas of life, you're trying to go the easy route. That's that's what we should do. But when it comes to personal growth, adding challenges to yourself, but keeping a positive mindset about it is the best way to do that. Cool, man. Well, yeah, dude, thanks. I really appreciate it. Dude. That was cool uh, getting to dig into your files and everything. And uh, thanks for coming on. This is going to be like the first uh, version of this. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully people got some interesting input in there. It's cool to be able to dig around into your files and ask you questions. Yes, definitely. We should do more stuff together. Cool. All right. Well, that's it for this one. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Peace.